Welcome back to the channel. This is DMAC, and today I'm looking at this uh, Asa Twin Combi. Quite a formidable lug, this one. Uh, definitely not to be uh, sniffed at. Not one that I've been able to beat so far because this one has the six pins in the top. This is all Asa barrels and spools with matched counter milling, and it also has the finger pins running down the side, which have to be lifted and rotated. Quite a formidable lock and an excellent candidate to make into a training lock, which is exactly what I wanted to do today. Now, I've done this a couple of times before. These are both uh, twin combis. Uh, this one, you can see I've knocked out the pins at the top. I've threaded them and I use these little grub screws, oh, grub screws, which I've got off of eBay. Uh, M4 screws and what that means is that um, I can pin it up how I like so currently this one on the right uh, Just has the finger pins and the sidebar so I can practice uh, lifting those and setting those and this one currently just has the uh, Asa pins on the top <clears throat> I've also got, this is a 700, ASA 700, uh, exactly the same with him, so we've got all ac access to all the chambers there. What that means is uh, when you're learning uh, a new lock, it means that we can take all the pins out except maybe this first one, learn to pick that one, and then we can add the second chamber in, learn to pick that, and, and prog progressively pin it until hopefully uh, we can get it open. I haven't actually managed to get this one open yet, not fully populated. Anyway, so today I wanted to do that, uh, make a training lock out of this uh, Asa uh, twin. And so the first thing that we're going to need to do, this one actually, sorry, this one didn't, didn't come with a key. Um, so in order to get this open, I've had to shim it at the back. Now this is a fairly straightforward process. Um, it's a bit, a little bit uh, labour intensive. Um, basically, just looking at this cylinder here, you're pushing the shim in from one side and then reaching through the keyway uh, to that last pin which i'm am i on now tight keyway this pressing down the, so what you've got to do is you're reaching inside the keyway you're pressing down the pin and each time you press it down you move that shim forward uh one pin so we'll get this one first then we press this one down move the shim forward this one down move the shim forward until the shim is all the way inside now that's what I've done to this one. It's something I've done off camera because it can take a long while. This one took about half an hour. So currently that core, as you can see, is loose. So we can get this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this out, knock these pins out, and then um, we're going to make this into a training lock. So let's uh, slide this core out. Now we've got a sidebar that's got springs in it. We've got finger pins down the bottom, so this is going to make a little bit of a mess, but hopefully I will keep hold of everything as it comes out. So I'll grab the follower. And I'm just going to slowly feed this out, trying not to lose anything as I do it. Okay. Perfect. Everything's out. So we've got the sidebar there, as you can see. I'm going to take him out and try and take him out without losing these springs. You can see there's some two tiny little springs either side. So let's try and get those out. That's one and two. And then I'm slowly going to take my finger off the bottom now. And we can see we've got the five uh, finger pins there. And I'm going to take all of these out. And then we've got the five springs underneath. One stubborn spring. Oh, I think it did come out. Yep, we've got all five there. And then we've got the pins on top. As you can see there, we've got the counter milling on this one here. And we didn't have the key, but this looks like it's got some reasonable, reasonably good bit in there currently, because this one's quite high and guarding these ones in the back. So I'm going to dump all of these out. Uh, we'll do that in a minute, actually. First of all, let's empty the top pins, which I suspect, yeah, are the Asa barrels. Very nice indeed. And 
and let's get rid of those springs as well. Okay, I'm gonna do there's a couple more springs stuck in there. So what I'm gonna do now is we'll go over to the workshop and I'll show you how to take these uh, these plugs out the top. So I'll see you there. Okay, over the workbench. So what we're gonna to need to do, what I've done, I've got some of these uh, uh, bolts here, and what I've done is I've just ground them. Uh, so all that thread's gone, and that's gonna mean we can knock these pins through. Uh, you could use anything for this, just anything that's uh, okay to be hit quite a lot to pop these pins out. So I'll make a bit of noise now, try not to hit the camera. I'm just going to rest that in the top and hit it. And same again on the next one. So there you go, I'm just pushing those pins all the way down. Doesn't take too much force, nice heavy hammer does help. But we don't want to just uh, bend anything or uh, uh, destroy anything in the cylinder itself. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is knock all of these out and uh, I'll see you back at the pinning tray. Okay, back at the pinning tray. So I've knocked all of those out now. I can see uh, one of them just there. Uh, to come out with uh, not too much hassle. Now, as you can see on this one that I showed you earlier, I've put grub screws in the top now. That's one way of doing it. Um, fairly easy to do. Um, I've got this uh, tap set in there. I think this is a M4 set. Uh, there's three different gradients there if you were going through higher materials. And you've seen me thread in chambers before on my challenge lock builds. So yeah, it's just a case of winding those in and then getting some corresponding M4 grub screws and winding those in. Um, but on this one, I thought I wanted to do something a little bit different. If you watched my recent video, uh, where I picked uh, this lock, which was the ASA 600. I mentioned that it had an unusual, or not something that I'd seen before, um, mechanism for uh, holding the pins in, which is this little brass rod here. And that rod runs all the way down here. Now when I looked at uh, this ASA twin that I was preparing to make into a training lock, I noticed that that too had the same feature. Um, and I had this brass rod hanging around. I think this is M3 brass. And when I wound it into that little thread at the back, it was a perfect fit. So what I thought is if I cut this to the right length um, and remove almost all of the thread, just leaving a little bit at the end, uh, exactly the same as on this lock, because that the thread on this is only right at that very back bit, and this is all uh, just, uh, there's no thread that runs through there. Um, it'll also make it a lot easier to remove pins and springs and that sort of thing. So that's what I'm going to go and do now. I'm just going to cut this down and I'll probably chuck it in a drill and try and get rid of all of this uh, thread there. And that will hopefully uh, make this uh, workable um, as a training lock. So bear with me, I'll be back shortly. Okay, what I did is I popped that uh, little brass thread there into the drill. Uh, and use a grinder just to take off the thread all the way along there. And what that means now is it will slide all the way in the back and then engage in that thread just here at the back and that blocks off all of the uh, pin stacks. So that means that this is now ready to be assembled as a training cylinder. Now what I'm going to do, um, we've still got the key pins in there, I'm not going to put uh, any of the uh, sidebar mechanism back in just yet. Reason being is this this is a training lock for somebody that uh, is not quite ready for uh, the um, ASA uh, sidebar experience. Okay, that's two and one. It seems to be missing a spring there. 
um, down here, so I'll define that one in a sec, but for now I'll just pin it up as a 5 pin. But when I send this on, um, what it means is that uh, once I've found that extra spring, uh, the recipient will be able to pin this up one pin at a time, which should make it uh, definitely an easier picking experience for him. Uh, this is a tricky bit. I just need to compress those pins as I slide this bar in. That's one, two, three, As ever, tricky to do on camera um, and give you a good view of what I'm doing. I think we're there. Yeah. So then I can tighten this up. And there we go. That is it. This, uh, this is now a training lock. Um, when I find the missing, missing spring there, I'll be able to just pop this extra pin in uh, and then it'll be fully ready to go. And yeah, what that means is that the uh, happy recipient, hopefully, uh, will be able to uh, learn how to pick uh, ASA barrels. And there, this is essentially pinned uh, as a 600 as an ASA 600, or uh, it will be when I put that last pin in. Um, and I'll also give him all the sidebar bits and bobs and these finger pins. And in time, I'm sure that you will be able to then uh, pin it up as a uh, as a twin combi and, and get the whole thing picked. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find that extra spring. I'll just pop these uh, this back plate on as well. I'll get that back on, and then this one is ready to go. So I think uh, definitely, if you've got one of these ASA cylinders. I've got a couple here. This is another another twin combi, and that's got the same hole at the back. And if you can find one with this hole at the back, it makes it uh, very easy to convert into a training cylinder. Certainly a lot easier than uh, than threading all of these and getting the grab screws. Um, and while while that's uh, fairly straightforward, um, I think this method here, if you've got access to uh, that little bar um, and that hole, it certainly makes it uh, a lot easier. And hopefully, Kevin, uh, this lock is coming your way soon, mate. And um, yeah, you can start off one pin at a time and uh, soon you'll be uh, smashing through all six ASA barrels and maybe the sidebar, who knows. Anyway, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.